Today's video is sponsored by Aaron and Company. They've got eight locations throughout New Jersey. Check them out at AaronCo.com. Giving it a test. This shower valve is called a GrowTherm Smart Control Thermostatic Valve by Growy. It's a mouthful. But it's one of many combinations that work with the Rapido Smart Box Rough-In, which you can't see right now because it's buried in the wall. The chances are you found this video to learn more about growy valves before buying one. Or you already have one and can't make sense of the language-independent instructions that look like a comic book. Either way, today on The Living Flip, I'm going to show you how we installed it. Once upon a time, a boy met a girl working for a mouse. They fell in love and realized they'd never own their own home working for the mouse. So they packed up a big truck and moved to New Jersey, lived in a basement to save money for a year, and bought a foreclosure to fix up while they lived there. This is their story. The Growy Rapido Smart Box is a single system that can output to many devices with hundreds of different combinations of valves. The valve cartridges fit inside the smart box, so all you see is a sleek, modern exterior trim. But the magic starts behind the wall with the blue Rapido smart box. Hot and cold come in from the bottom, and it has three output ports that can be used for various different shower heads. The features and functions of this system are all determined by the selected trim. Our trim has two output knobs that control on and off and volume, plus a large temperature mixing valve. I prepared the smart box by plugging port A and installing threaded PEX adapters everywhere else. I attached a plywood backing plate to the studs to allow me to mount the smart box at the right depth. I'm not sure if it's needed or not, but I put in this adjustable backing plate, even with the studs, just so it would be right behind the sheetrock next to the valve. I crimped a half inch PEX tube from port B up to the main shower head. and from port C to the hand shower. Next, with the house water shut off, I removed the two shark bite caps that were plugging the water line since I removed the old valve. I sanded the copper and prepared the fittings with tinning flux before soldering them with my torch. While the pipes cooled, I crimped PEX to the hot and cold inlets on the smart box. When they were cool enough to touch, I connected the PEX to the copper lines with crimp fittings. By the way, I had only used shark bite fittings with PEX in the past because I thought crimpers were expensive professional tools. But I found this inexpensive one on Amazon and it's perfect for occasional use by homeowners like me. I installed temporary nipples in the fittings and capped them so I could pressure test the lines. All right, water back on. How's it look? There's a drip. A drip? Yeah, from here. You can see it. On the pipe there. Really okay, the here. thread. Mm-hmm. But right. other than that... How's the top one? I think it's good. Okay. All right. It's All right. water. Well, let me get in there and let me tighten that up. I see it right there. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Grab me that paper towel right there. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. And these are 
good. All right. Excellent. No drip over here. I was worried about that because that would be really hard to get to if I had to tighten it. Everything looks good. All right, we leave it for that way for a little while and then we close up the wall. All right, with the water off again, what I need to do is put in the service stops inside this, this mixer. This thing that comes in here by default just takes the hot and cold, mixes them and sends them up every line. Trouble is that the hot can bleed over to the cold, so can't leave it like this. So I have to take this out and put in these service stops. All right, inside here, we have to plug the hot and cold. I already put the cold one in. This is the hot, these are what the plugs look like. They were in the bag with the, uh, the whole kit, with the roughen. They just pop right in there like that. And then this goes back. All right, the water is back on with the plugs inside. Everything still looks good. Now we can close it up. Now we can close up the walls. I don't want to bore you with drywall installation and joint taping. But the smart box comes with a really cool rubber flashing that prevents any water from leaking into the wall, even if it gets behind the tile. In my case, I embedded it in joint compound. But you can use thin set or whatever adhesive you use for your waterproofing system. After that was all dry, my son-in-law Josh waterproofed the shower walls with RedGuard. I like using Red Guard because it will waterproof anything, even drywall, even cardboard if I wanted to. The hardest part of this job is cutting the tile to fit around the smart box. One word of advice, don't put the smart box in the middle of the tile. The easiest method is to center the valve where four tiles meet. To make that even easier, I used the cap from the smart box to mark the four tiles. I cut each corner very carefully by chipping away at it with a wet saw. Then Josh installed them on the wall. After the tile was grouted, I used a plastic cutting wheel on my Dremel to trim the smart box flush with the tile. I also caulked around it with silicone, but I didn't record that. Josh turned off the water downstairs, but we neglected to open a faucet to release the pressure. So I got a little surprise when I pulled out the temporary plug. Ay, 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 ay. The lines needed to be flushed before installing the valve. So I removed the service stops and put the plug back in temporarily. Turn it on for about 30 seconds and then turn it off again. Now came the fun part. After lubricating the gaskets on the valve cartridge, I loosely installed it in the smart box and made sure it was level before tightening it in place. I used a hacksaw to cut the button posts against the orange guides, which were just temporary to set the length. I removed the temporary guides and snapped in the control knobs.
the little green rings screwed in so they were only visible when the button is out. That's how the water gets turned on. I installed caps for the shower head and hand shower. Then the trim just presses on, no screws. And finally, a cap on the temperature control. All right, go ahead, turn on the water. Giving it a test. That's low flow. High flow. Off. Low flow and high flow work fine. Nice. Ooh, that's hot. Good. Ooh, that's cool. That's nice. <laughs> Getting water all over the floor. <laughs> oh well. But it works. Hats may be all gone, but we'd still love you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment with your thoughts. Thanks.